we went on Instagram. We're like, hey, anybody want to help us help Chinatown? <laughs> oh, that actually worked? Wait, yeah. You, you DM'd. You, you slid yeah, yeah, in people's slid DMs? You slid in DMs? DMs. Okay. We slid in DMs for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Isn't it always good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for the benefit of mankind. Lucky Boys Podcast. Chinatown for them represents so much of like their identity and their like pockets in the neighborhood that like really speak to their identity and they want to give back. And I think that was a big reason why we started. We felt we didn't know we knew we wanted to help. We didn't know how to help. And so thus we felt helpless. But then mm -hmm. um I don't know, we just like kind of got a group of friends together and we were like, okay, what do we do? All right, I guess I'll just like use the skills that I know at work yeah. and try to like communicate that. Um, to tell the story about Chinatown, which is like my professional background. For Vic, she's so good at um, event management, operations, and logistics. So she put together that entire program for Feed Our Heroes. Harry created this beautiful brand that represents Chinatown and is so relatable to so many. And so it was just like everybody throwing in their superpowers and their skill sets. Um, and the you know, that's why it's a little hard to define what Welcome to Chinatown <laughs> is. It's a little confusing sometimes, but... Um, it, it, it's because, you know, we really wanted to take what we know and augment it into the small business setting. Um, and that was the other th important thing for us, too, is to make sure that, you know, being new to this nonprofit game, um, we never wanted to come in and tell a business owner what to do. We wanted to partner with them and, like, make decisions together um, where it best fits their business and their needs. Because at the end of the day, they know their business the best. We're just here to help support that mm -hmm. and, you know, spark conversations about new things to try or things that they can opt into. Um, that was like really core is we didn't want to ever make it seem like it was more work for them to do on top of everything yeah. they're already going through. So we, it, we wanted to make it as simple as like you can opt into this or that or don't and we'll find other ways to help you if you, if you want that help. From feeling powerless to taking action and then building a coalition of, of folks that felt the same way and wanted to do something. But what, I mean, with no experience, uh, ex except your professional experience and, and just what you know so far being here in New York and wanting to be, wanting to give back to the community during this tough time. What are some additional challenges that, that you had to face that were totally unexpected? So when Vic and I were first figuring out what to do like what was the first th initiative we wanted to do we tried to launch this e-gift card platform and you know like a lot of people were doing that at that time buy a gift card from your favorite restaurant um you know use it for takeout delivery or use it when they're reopened that quickly failed <laughs> like why do you think that is <laughs> the first because nobody knew who we were there was like no trust element. And so that's, yeah. that was like the so secret get, I think getting the businesses to actually trust because us. You said you just yeah. started in February of 2020. Oh, March of yeah, 2020. March yeah, of 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've only been around for nine months. Yeah. And in nine months, you raised a, close to half a million. Yeah. yeah. So how did you, where was that leap where people started recognizing and then uh, I guess started looking at you like, yeah. okay, you know what? Um, you guys are seem like the gold standard right now. <laughs> I think, well, I think <laughs> you know, this nonprofit, what's Asian going on? Proud yeah. everywhere. Um, I would say, I think it was because of Feed Our Heroes and we were getting them this consistent re source of revenue, right? Mm -hmm. And we were kind of taking out the middleman. We were placing the orders, we were picking them up directly and we were distributing to the hospitals and they came to trust us that we would, you know, actually execute on this. Yeah. And we we really committed to financial transparency as well on the GoFundMe. Um, because for Feed Our Heroes, we were relying on donations from the community uh, in order to buy these meals and deliver to the hospitals. And every week we would release where, exactly which restaurants were getting the money and exactly which portion of it was going to, going to the business and which one was being spent on, let's say, delivery costs. And so I think over time that went on for four or five months, I mm -hmm. think over time they really started to, to like trust us yeah. in that and making sure, and, and Vic and Jen, some of these businesses are cash only. So they would yeah. actually walk around to these businesses and you know make sure they settled up every week. Um, and so there was a lot of dedication and commitment. And I, and I think to go back to one of your original questions is what was the challenges, I think, we both full, still have full-time jobs. Every, all yeah. the volunteers have full-time jobs. Like no, no one's doing this as like their primary 
anything. And so one of the challenges is making sure that I think they saw how hard everyone was working to, to execute on this program. And I think that's where that trust was building up from and seeing the dedication. How did you get the right pieces? Because obviously to be that successful in, in such a short amount of time and to build the trust in a community that's not known to trust easily. Yeah. H how did you, what did you look for in, in your team when you were constructing it? Or was it just, hey, I have a group of friends and, and you have a group of friends? It, was, it, was it that and you just got super lucky that you got a dope circle <laughs> <laughs> or or did you actually look at some people go no you have this superpower you'd be great here you would be great here like how did that fall into place it was a little bit of both i would say um so through a lot of our day jobs there's employee resource groups um which are kind of like employee driven communities oftentimes based on a commonality. So for example, um, Vic, she co-leads the Asian Affinity Group at Estee Lauder. Um, I co-lead a an ERG called Formation, which is for employees who identify as people of color. And so you have this entire ERG network of ERG leads across other companies that all are kind of connected. And that's how we found Harry, our head of creative, because he was an ERG lead at his previous company. Um, so it was it was a little bit of that. But I would also say it was, you know, we, we went on Instagram. We're like, hey, anybody want to help us help Chinatown? <laughs> oh, that actually worked? Wait, yeah. You DM. You, you slid yeah, in people's slid DMs. You slid in DMs. DMs. Okay. We slid in DMs for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Isn't it always good? <laughs> <laughs> for the benefit of mankind. Okay. There we go. There yeah. we go. Um, and, and yeah, so that, so that actually worked. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, we, we were also part of, the Asian Greek system in college, um, which allowed us to tap into that network too. And especially because a lot of a lot of those volunteers also had their own connections to Chinatown. It just became very seamless in that sense. Um, in terms of like figuring out what we were gonna do, I think the reason why Feed Our Heroes was also so successful in after I, identifying that challenge of like instilling trust yeah. was because of, you know, what we were talking about earlier about giving businesses something to opt into that's really easy for them to yeah. do. So in the case of Feed Our Heroes, all they were doing were preparing the meals as they normally would. Yeah. And it became consistent um, orders. So, you know, as we're making those, uh, you know, paying for the uh, invoices in person, picking up the food to go get it delivered, that's when you start building those relationships with the business owners and they start to open up to you a little bit more. Yeah, you had conversations with them. It wasn't just a yeah. exchange, right? Yeah. It was, you, you come in there, you tell them how many orders, have been there, but yeah. then you're also talking to them about how their week's been, what yeah. challenges they're facing. I think a large part is, is when you and Vic were doing that, a lot of the conversations that you had with them about the challenges they're facing, what they think they need help with, those were really the, mm -hmm. the, like the building blocks for yeah. those relationships.